We're going to be looking at steps for when the second derivative is given and you are asked about the original. So let's go ahead and make sure we're clear about that. We're going to be given the second derivative and we have to hop all the way back to the original or something about the original function. Um, this re requires more information to be given. However, the difficulty is really not much different than what we've been looking at. So let's go ahead and read this question. Example three says, if d squared y uh, dx squared is what it should say. This notation is a little off, but basically it's the second derivative equals 12x. Um, so right off the bat, I'm just going to underline it in orange again. We'll just keep the second derivative in orange. So we are given the second derivative is 12x. Okay. Next, let's keep going. And x is zero. When x is zero, then dy dx equals one. Okay. So here's kind of our middle ground. So in the middle, we have the first derivative. So again, this is the second. Um, and in fact, I might even just maybe label this uh, f double prime of x. I mean, it's the same thing as the notation that we're given. Um, okay, so then in the pink, we have the first derivative. So I'm just going to label it f prime of x. Same thing as dy dx. It's no different. You could label it y prime even. And finally, y equals 2. So y equals 2 is actually dealing with the original. So I'm going to go ahead and put that one again in purple since it's the original. And that's just f of x. Okay. Then what is x when y is 3? What is x when y is 3? So um, finally, um, that's still the original. Um, I'll go ahead and for our final question we're trying to answer, um, I will use red for that one. What is x when y is 3? Okay, so y is 3, That's again, has to do with the original, but for now, um, we want to uh, basically circle that in red for what we're doing. Now, here's the thing. One more thing I want to note. Look at the middle line. When x is 0, then dy dx equals 1 and y equals 2. So when x equals 0, both these things are true. So what I'm going to do is right above here, I'm going to write also that x equals 0. Okay, This is a point for the original, 0, 2, and then 0, 1 is the point for the first derivative. Let's be very clear about that. So here's all of our information. Let's go ahead and see if we can solve this problem. So the first step we're going to do is follow the steps for when the second derivative is given and you asked about the first derivative. So basically what that basically means is we just want to figure out what the first derivative is. We don't know it, okay? We're just given a point. So again, follow the steps for when the second derivative is given and you asked about the first. You want to find the first derivative given the second. So here's our second derivative, 12x. In order to figure out the first derivative, we need the initial value, 0, 1. And from there we can solve for c, and then we can figure out um, what the second, the first derivative is. Okay, so we're given the second, we want to find the first given this initial value. So here's the second, f double prime x equals 12x. If we take the antiderivative, we'll get the first derivative plus c. Well, the antiderivative of 12x is 12x squared over 2 plus c. 12x squared over 2 is 6x squared plus c. But we were given the initial value of 0 comma 1. So um, f prime of x must be equal to 1, and x must be equal to 0. Again, that is explicitly stated in the question right here. We will use those values to solve for c. We've already done this before. Uh, plugging in 0 for x and 1 for f prime of x, we get c is equal to 1. So that means that f prime of x is equal to 6x squared plus 1. So again, for step 1, if you want to shorten the title of step 1, it's finding the first derivative. Okay, and that's because we were given the second. In order to get to the original, you have to find the first derivative. So, first derivative in this case is 6x squared plus 1. Now let's go ahead and read step 2 together. Follow the steps for when the derivative is given and you're asked about the original. So again, we've done this. Now that we have the first derivative, we can solve for the original. So, the answer derivative of the first derivative is the original f of x plus c. Here we just solve for the first derivative, 6x squared plus 1. And the derivative of that is the reverse power rule, 6x cubed over 3 plus x plus c, which gives you 2x cubed plus x plus c. Now, again, I noted when we read this problem that uh, x, when x equals 0, y is 2. So that's the original. So we have a point on the original, which is 0, 2. 
we can use to solve for the C for, for the original. The C for the original is not the same as the C for the first derivative. Okay, so when x is 0, y is 2, that was given. We will plug in 0 for x and then 2 for y, and we get C is equal to 2. So now we have f of x equals 2x cubed plus x plus 2. Good. However, you know, the question stated, I have this in the quotations, what is x when y is 3? So we can plug in 3 for f of x, same, same thing as y, and then we can just solve for x. So we're going to plug in a 3 for f of x, okay? And we need to figure out what x is. So we want three from both sides. We get 0 equals 2x cubed plus x minus 1. Let's go ahead and graph this and see where it crosses the x axis. All right, here we have our graph using Desmos, and if we touch it right here, we get 0.59. Now, I don't know about the third decimal. Maybe it's already rounded, so we'll just keep it that way. Um, so x would be 0.59 uh, when that is equal to 0, as, it, as we were just solving. So therefore, I'm going to go here, and I'm going to say, finally, x is approximately equal to 0.59. And again, that solved our problem because that's what the question was asking. What is x when y is 3? So basically, you'd have a point on that graph, on this graph of x equals 2x cubed plus x plus 2. The point would be basically 0 0.59 comma 3. So they gave us the y value and find the x value. And again, for context sake, we were given the second derivative. We were given a few points, one point for the first and one for the original, and we were asked to solve for x when y is 3. To do that, we had to find the first derivative and the original, and we finally found the x value. That's it for this particular example. If you have any other questions about this, let me know.